Morning everyone and welcome to another episode of Straight Talking. As always, as it's not pre-prepared or planned or scripted, this is just my feelings, my thoughts, my evidence, my documentation and my experience sharing it to help hopefully make a difference and to encourage others. Um, what you see is what you get. Yep, this week I look like I've been dragged through a hedge backwards to uh, coin a good Norfolk or Suffolk expression. But, you know, I'm not going to disguise that I have a severe mental health disability. I suffer from complex post-traumatic stress disorder and that are good times and bad times. And most of the bad times are when there are sev uh, serious trigger events. Um, I will say now that this video today will contain some very emotive or emotional um, comments. Um, there will definitely be some trivia events, so please, if you're having a bad day, you know, this isn't the time to watch this. Um, as I say, the, the, the idea of this is talking about mental health from the experience of living with mental health and living under the current system. Um, I'm pretty sure today that uh, um, the cats will join us at some point. They tend to pop in. There's one here sitting on the printer who's desperate to sit on my lap every 10 seconds, but I will play it by ear anyway. Um, last time, um, obviously, we were facing the uh, disappointment with our fundraising campaign at uh, the events at the local pub, which finished, but then we were very upbeat about the potential of joining Lost of Town Football Club, which uh, I'm happy to say is a deal that is concluded and set in concrete. Um, we've done this by the book, we know it's in writing and we've all agreed and all happy. Already 40 plus uh, music events have been added and announced, so uh, we've done everything possible. The first date is June the 30th. And I hope to see many of you there. It is the classic rock night. We're open eight to one. Uh, admission is three pound before nine thirty, five pound after. Last admission eleven thirty. Um, it is a superb venue. Lots of dance floor, plenty of seating. Um, there's a really good bar, and the prices are low. Uh, we've got uh, superb security, discreet security of the company that are, are running. Um, the door and actually our protection because for anyone with mental health they want to know that they are safe well discreet security are the best at it um, they're fully qualified uh, NHS trained uh, medically aware and just a real traditional meet and greet uh, door team so looking forward to working with them there's a lot I want to talk about today <clears throat> about the subject of our rights, the way we're treated. But let me give you a little background to this first. Um, in my own case, um, when I was diagnosed with what was thought to be initially severe post traumatic stress disorder, um, it took me 10, 11 months to get out of the house to get help and to claim my right to disability benefits. I am still fighting for my first 10 months of benefits that I was entitled to. Um, my second assessment uh, was run by Atos. It was humiliating, degrading, threatening. Um, it reduced me to tears and to uh, thoughts of attempting suicide. It was, as many cases have been proven, full of lies and misconceptions and mis misleading information. They refused all the hundreds of pages of medical evidence apart from my GP letter. They refused to let me talk about mental health disability. The only four questions that were linked to mental health were, can I switch the microwave on? Can I use a washing machine? Really? <laughs> That's how you diagnose mental health disability? No, well, wait, you, you asked me two more. Cat, dog, rabbit. What three words did I just say? And 
What is 76 take away 5? I will never forget the humiliation of when I gave the answers. They stood up and applauded me and said, Oh, well done, Mr. Hammond. I wish we could do that. How disgusting, how disgraceful, how appalling. Despite all the evidence, they decided that because the assessor thought I looked okay, I must be okay, and therefore they halved my benefits. I tried to appeal, and um, they just sent the same paperwork back they'd already supplied me about the reduction. I then took legal advice. I went to see Dial and CAB. I was entitled to a copy of my full assessment so I could go forward with a, a proper appeal through the courts. I had to do this within six months. I sent recorded delivery letters every two to four weeks to the directors of ATOS, the directors of DWP, the government officers. Every month for 15 months they declined to acknowledge or reply. Atos just put me through the normal complaints procedure then washed their hands of it. The government officers did absolutely nothing about it and eventually DWP replied and said I'm sorry we haven't had your letters then what on earth were you responding to? Finally after about 18 months, I had two large packages arrive from my door of all the correspondence. And I can only say the evidence has never been more damning or concrete. I was horrified when I saw my written assessment, the manner they described me, the evidence of the humiliation. Um, it, I just couldn't cope with that. Um, it has taken me all this time and it's still ongoing to prepare to take this forward. I'm not going to give up my rights. I'm appalled. Uh, and, uh, I'm laughing at the moment because the screen is shaking because it's the cats playing on the desk. So that's quite amusing. Um, yeah, I just, I cannot believe the way this government, these country the innocent are being treated you know not just those with mental health but the disabled those on the streets it's appalling it's shocking and my mind cast back to all the soldiers that fought for our human rights and what they suffered and what have we got you know it's it's a modern world but it's it's a it's a third world uh, government I am just shocked, I really am, and I'm, I'm determined to fight my case all the way to the High Court and make a stand. Now, of course, they've taken away our legal aid to make sure we can't fight them, but that isn't going to stop me. If I have to sell everything I've got to um, support a legal claim, if I have to use my benefits to pay for solicitors to go forward and I'll do that you know why should the DWP ATOS the the new group uh, organized by DWP this government get away with treating people the way they have um, I've got a pile of paperwork and I'm going to go through and reflect but continue this story um, this last year has been extremely tough for me I've kept going I've extended myself way beyond my vulnerability limits many times and I've come to the point several times of not wanting to go on um, but I felt I couldn't give up but the one thing that has kept me alive and this is in all truth uh, despite all I'm talking about the emptiness, the loneliness of fighting this campaign alone, of just trying to survive. The one thing I hung on to, and the only reason, and the only thing that has kept me alive is these music nights. An event that can give pleasure and enjoyment, that can fundraise for mental health, and now, of course, for our community football club, and give us all a chance 
to speak out. Now, in all this, uh, I finally got an agreement that my benefits were secured to at least 2020 because they at least accepted this was a long-term disability. And for me, this actually the truth is that this is a lifelong disability. I'll never get better from this. I will never recover from what happened in Kenya. However, I'm not going to sit on benefits for the rest of my life. I don't want to be on benefits for the rest of my life. My life has changed. I can't do what I originally did. But eventually, I want to get back to my writing and have some sort of income off that that will reduce my benefits. And also with my music, once everything is paid for, we've made progress, and once we're, you know, we're making money on a regular basis for the charity and I can start earning a little bit again, then great, you know, whether it's a year, two years, three years. I am a genuine person who has had a very traumatic experience and I'm determined to support myself. But in the meantime, I am not going to be treated like uh, a leper, an outcast by the government, by DWP, nor should anybody else. Um, I had a major trauma event last week. Uh, I'll tell you what caused it in a minute, but something happened on Saturday which left me spiralling out of control. Um, I had no way of controlling the emotion, the impact, the descent into the darkness. You know, I've talked about this many times about falling down a black tunnel. This time, I have to admit, I didn't want to stop. This time, um, I wanted to end my life. I'd had enough. I couldn't cope with the overwhelming uh, shock of what had happened. Um, I just spiralled out of control. Um, I reached out for help during the night. I talked about not having the courage to end my life, but not wanting to go on. I did what I often do when I can't cope with the feelings is try to drown it. So, you know, I, I put away a, a, a substantial amount of alcohol just to numb the pain. I think, you know, I went through three and a half bottles of wine before it actually became numb. But what happened didn't go away. It became worse over the next few days. Um, I had three days running where I reached out for help from the Better Together group, from friends, from the mental health groups. I've had two counselling therapy sessions already this week. I am still very emotional. I'm still bouncing along the bottom of this dark place uh, with no sign of uh, putting it behind me. And I felt that perhaps rather than writing about it, to actually talk about it would be a good way forward. Um, Everything is positive around the music events and that is what I hang on to because I have no strength or energy left otherwise. When I step on stage I can be a different person because I am secure, I'm behind the DJ console, I'm away from the crowd, I have security there, I have friends to support me so I can cope with that. But as I've often said, if you offered me a million pounds to step out into public and go onto the dance floor I'd rather kill myself. I'd rather run out into the road screaming because I could not cope with that. There, there is a difference, you know, and with mental health disability, everyone who has that understands that. But this government, DWP, at us previously, the new company, they have no professional recognition or understanding of what the hell mental health disability is. All they understand is that they are on a commission to reduce the numbers that receive benefits. For all the evidence in the papers, they have lied, they have cheated, they have misappropriated information, they have misdirected people, they have given interviews um, with people that aren't professionals, they're now nothing more than clerical typists. They have lied about interviews taking place. The evidence is overwhelming. It goes on and on. I'm not going to say any more than that because I'm going to court, I'm going to fight them. But it brings me back to what has happened. And I talked to Todd Sullivan last night because I needed someone to know just how bad this was. 
The trigger was DWP yet again. They have decided in all their wisdom to force me to undertake a third assessment, which A, I will not do, B, I cannot do because I will not live through it, and C, I do not accept you can judge mental health disability on the same documentation that is judging us by switching on a microwave, remembering three words and deducting one number from another. This um, form has already been illegally challenged and it has been found to be unsuitable, unjustifiable and disproportionate. It's wrong. So I'm fighting it. I'm at the moment writing to the mental health groups, to MIND, Time to Change, my GP, uh, clinical psychologists, well-being, my therapist with a copy of the form and asking them to review the form um, as part of my legal case to state that this is no recognisable or legal way to measure mental health disability. So that's who I am. It has been one of the worst weeks I have experienced. I haven't talked about it much online. I haven't shared it much simply because I, there's so many people out there who are going through what I'm going through, many genuine people, and they've got enough to cope with. And I want to do my best to support them. Now, I want to talk through our proven legal rights. They are human rights, the Disability Discrimination Legislation, try saying that if you had a glass of coffee, two or three. <laughs> and um, just to give you, you know, the legality of what's behind us. I've got a pile of paperwork here and I'm going to talk you through it because this is already evidence for everyone. This is part of hundreds and hundreds of pages of paperwork. It's all online. I suggest everyone has a copy. The first one, the reference number is CRPD stroke C stroke 15 stroke R.2 stroke REV.1. It is the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. Uh, this is the latest edition, 6th of October 2016. And this is the official United Nations response and following the inquiry of the United Kingdom um, breaking the human rights legislation and disability discrimination. And it is quite comprehensive. It's 22 pages long. And the result was widely announced uh, in the press. For example, the BBC um, reported on it on the 7th of November 2016. If you can see that article. The United Nations found the government and the UK are guilty of grave and systematic violations of disability people's rights. It's been reported to the UN, it's been examined by the UN and the UN have found the government and the UK guilty of not just one, but numerous counts of violation of human rights and disability discrimination where people with disability, including and especially mental health disability, have been targeted. The government then produced a written response. And this response, 30 pages long, basically, is their own version of events. There's, to me, having gone through it, it's just rhetoric. Um, it's just a fog of words that doesn't prove any genuine or legally standing argument of what they had done being right. So there was, of course, a follow up. The DPAC produced a damning report, 78 pages, 
um, to the government's response. Uh, DPAC are the disabled, disabled, disabled people against cuts with inclusion London and this with facts, figures, evidence throws out the government's argument totally, completely, utterly and proves the case. News, uh, there is so much in the news about it. Um, this is another report that came out in, on the UK and BBC News about the damning United Nations report uh, about the systematic violations of the rights of people with disabilities. I have dozens and dozens of posts like this. What happened next was there was a, a test case that was taken to court uh, with the support of MIND and legal representatives. Um, and during that case, there were a number of professional reports about this systematic violation again. It didn't go away. The government tried to bury it, but there were news stories after news stories after news stories. There were... Well, the Committee of the Rights of Persons with Disabilities in Geneva did another written report condemning the government. This is the key case that was taken to court. The case number is CO-2496-2017. Um, and it was the Secretary of State for Works and Pensions and versus Mind and the Equality Human Rights Commission. The government lost. It was proven that the case of disability, discrimination and human rights abuse was justified. It was proven to have happened and the government were wrong. They were going to appeal and I hope I've got all this uh, in order. Um, the government decided at the last minute not to appeal and furthermore they in a very embarrassing and humbling way had to acknowledge that they were wrong that they had made mistakes they have admitted liability i'll repeat that again they have admitted liability and have now got to reassess thousands and thousands and thousands of claims by people with mental health disability and other forms of disability who have been discriminated against. That's me and a lot of you and a lot of other people. Um, there are quite a few documents here. I have um, from newspaper cuttings. I don't want to uh, show them all, but key ones here posted on the 21st of the 12th, 2017. Uh, the High Court ruled the government changes to legislation were discriminatory. Um, the government on the 19th of the 1st announced they will not appeal against the ruling. And also on the 19th of January 2018, welfare written statement reference HCWS 414. It is a statement by the government that after careful consideration, they decided not to appeal the High Court judgment. This is crucial. This is the document that says the government were wrong. They abused our human rights. They abused our disability rights. They discriminated against us. We now have the right to take action. Whilst I don't have the documentation, there are all sorts of talks in political circles that the government are trying to amend, I think, the European Human Rights Act and other legislation to, pre uh, to prevent retrospective claims on benefits where disability discrimination um, has occurred. Now, I can't comment further on that because I haven't seen the paperwork on it, but if that is the case, that is further violation and that is disgraceful and it's disgusting and there's no way that that can be 
qualified as legal. Right? The thing is, right now, we have a proven case supported by the High Court, supported by the United Nations, supported by MIND and all the mental health groups. The government were wrong. DWP and ATOS were wrong. We have a right to claim not only retrospectively the benefits we were entitled to, also for compensation. For my own case, my medical documentation clearly, concisely proves that their actions were responsible for a severe worsening of my condition, of attempting suicide, of destroying my uh, rehabilitation, um, it's discrimination against me, it's, it was abuse, it was a breach of all the legislation that governs these organisations. Um, it was clear that the decisions by Atos were wrong, based on the wrong evidence or the fact that they hadn't accepted the correct evidence and they had made it up as they go along. What is a huge concern is that this new company that is supposed to be taking over from matters appear to be going the same way. Um, they have got to review all these cases. Um, they are still, I believe, on a commission basis. I don't think anything will change. I hope and pray that it does. But I think everyone individually or by the mental health groups or organisations should fight the government to stand up for your rights. If you can't do it alone, talk to CAB, to DIAL, to the, uh, the law projects, to all the mental health groups and do it as a group application. Uh, I am committed to fighting the government on this and stand up for rights. I'm now moving forward because this last week has only served to prove that all the government care about is money and their situation and their standing and we are just individuals who do not matter. They have no concept or understanding of mental health disability. I am appalled. My father and all the people that fought through the wars for our rights would have been appalled were they been alive today. Uh, it's disgusting, disgusting, absolutely. Um, yeah, that's about it for today. Um, I'm appointing solicitors this week. I've made a decision to appoint Nicholson solicitors to represent me. Um, we'll take this to the High Courts. Um, we'll seek action to recover the funds I would have been entitled to from 2012 end of onwards um, for the loss of disability benefits, for um, compensation and for um, I'm trying to think of the phrase that it's called now, but uh, anything relating to that that affected me, um, then yeah, I, you know, I want compensation for that too because its impact on my medical situation, on my personal health, my emotional health. Uh, it's called consequential loss. Um, what, anything related to the main claim, physically, mentally, personally, emotionally, financially. So at this point, it's too much for me to do. I need legal representation, we all do. I don't care if I have to cut my standard of living further. It's not brilliant to start with, but I don't care. I don't care if I, you know, I have to sell things to make money to pay solicitors. I'm going to do this. I am going to keep moving forward as long as I can, as long as my strength will allow me to. And I hope and pray that all of you will support me on these music nights because I've survived these last five years somehow. The music events keep me alive. I need your support and I'll do everything I can to support you and make this a success. I set out to raise £250,000 for mental health disability. We've already raised £1,200. We have projects underway at the moment. We have sponsored walks. We have sponsored events with Barclays Bank, uh, with the Body Shop and other groups. Now all the music events. It's a good start, so please 
help me, support me. I'm doing the best I can as well. And I hope and pray that as a community, we do this together, we work together and we stand together. Thank you for listening. Bye for now.